Hey, this is Dennis from the Flip Fluids add-on development team and today we are going to show you 10 tips that will improve your workflow with our add-on. Here we go. Okay, this is tip number one. We are talking about debugging. Let's see the animation here. You know, uh, you all know this problem. Uh, you have an obstacle in your scene and fluids are coming through the obstacle's walls. And overall, the fluid simulation itself is not looking very beautiful. And you can uh, now debug the scene to uh, see what's going wrong here. So the first thing I want to show you is uh, in the debugging panel on the right side, you can enable the disk to display uh, the grid. And this is a um, simulation grid the simulator will use for this scene. And you can understand each cell in this grid as a maximum size for a single fluid drop or water drop. Uh, that means uh, increasing the resolution, you can uh, do it here, um, will show you in real time how fine your simulation is going to be. This simulation grid can help you to understand what's going wrong with your obstacle. So one tip is um, to have a very good working obstacle is to make its thickness as big as one single cell is here. Everything below this uh, would mean that fluid will come through the walls like you can see here. So, but what's wrong with our obstacle? There's another way to check this exactly. Let me disable the grid and let's enable the obstacle debugging checkbox below here. And um, that means when you hit bake now, the obstacle will output the obstacle in the way it sees it. And then we only have to bake one or more frames. And then we can hide our cylinder in the viewport and reload the last, or reload the frame. And then we see this. This is our obstacle in the way the simulator sees it. And this is because it's not thick enough. So let me increase the thickness so it's bigger than one cell. Okay, like this here. And then let me disable the grid again. Reset the cache and just bake one frame. So we have a new debugging obstacle. Let me disable this and reload the frame. And now you can see the uh, Debugged, the debug obstacle looks uh, much better than before. Let me choose a little bit higher value, like 125, and let me click on Bake. And let us wait for some uh, frames to finish to see how good this will work now. Let's play the animation, and then you will see the fluid keeps being inside the obstacle. So this is why debugging is so important to use. Tip number two, surface tension and sheeting. As you can see in this example, you have uh, no surface tension or sheeting on the left side. And uh, with the same settings for the simulator, uh, surface tension and sheeting enabled on the right side. And you see, Surface tension and sheeting gives you a much more beautiful fluid simulation. And this is how you can enable it. So make sure your domain is selected. And then you will find this Flip Fluid World panel inside the Flip Fluid add-on. And all you have to do is enable surface tension and uh, enable the sheeting effects. Um, both are wonderful features that will um, make fluids more thin, it will make them more stable and um, the best thing is it fills some holes in your fluids. So let me show you some final renderings we did uh, while developing these features. Tip number three, never bake with your final resolution without making some tests. 
We recommend you to start with a low resolution like 100 to see if all parts of your animation are working. Um, and um, sometimes some changes are required to fix the timing of things, an example. Uh, you found out you missed to set something to be an obstacle. It would be a waste of time. So, when everything looks correct, you should increase the resolution. Tip number four. In one of our demonstrations, you see that light tower animation. There are a lot of bubbles underwater, there's much foam and many spray particles. But all these white water particles need to be calculated and rendered. And this increases your baking and render time and your baking files are bigger too. Yeah. However, if you are not going to render a scene where bubbles or foam will be visible, you can disable them. And this is how to do it. Do this by clicking on Advanced inside the white water panel and disable what is not required for your scene. Um, remember, this will affect your, the result of your simulation, so make some tests in a lower resolution, like we told you before. Tip number five. You finished baking a massive scene and your 3D viewport drives crazy because of that many data that are imported. If this happens, there are in general two things to increase the speed in your viewport. The first thing is use the preview mesh. Click on preview in the helper panel on the left and reload the frame to make sure it is really loaded. By doing this, Blender does have to handle less data for the 3D viewport. But there's more you can do. The second thing. Um, decrease the number of shown particles. You will find settings for this in the display settings panel on the right. Choose the percent of shown particles for all particles at the same time or for each by each by clicking on spray bubble foam. So I would say low value like 1% will be enough for working in the viewport. But if not, you can disable particles completely by setting them to 0%. Six. Sometimes you may want to try some different settings, but without overwriting your finished simulation. So there's an easy trick to do this. Just change the name of your bake folder and start to bake with new settings. You can switch between all bakes just by changing the folder name. And as a good tip, we recommend you to make a list with the settings you have changed matching to your bake folder name. And number seven, slow motion. If you would like to be able to slow down your animation in a post process, you can get perfect quality using higher frame rates. If you choose 100 frames per second for your scene in general, you need to make sure your simulation is set to 100 frames per second too. Of course, this will increase the simulation and rendering time a lot. But when finished, it's not required to use any interpolation plugin that mostly gives artifacts. And here comes the 8. Work with inverted obstacles. Let's say you want to have some fluids inside of a text or any other object. You maybe are going to make a duplicate of your object and make this a fluid object. And for sure this will work, but if you are going to change the animation of your object or resize it or whatever you are thinking about to change, this will end up in more work than required. The trick is don't work with duplicates, but invert your obstacle. Our simulator will only simulate what's inside your inverted obstacle. The other fluid around will automatically be dropped in the simulator. 
Tip number nine, use modifiers. So simple, but many people didn't know. While your baked surface is selected, you can add modifier to it. An example, use smooth to make your surface look more perfect. Or my favorite, add the ocean modifier and switch its geometry to displace. This is a trick I'll use for my flip ocean tutorial. I'm still working on this. And the final tip number 10. If you would like to check your finished simulation in real time, but you don't want to waste render time or disk space, you can make a viewport render. Of course, this will be far away from a production ready rendering, but it gives you all the required information to make sure you can start with the final rendering. So, to do it, check the only render checkbox to make the viewport showing you only the things that will be visible in a final render and make sure you set a path and a final in your render settings. Choose the resolution of your scene for your preview and you can also choose to render this preview on a transparent background to make some tests with compositing. An example to check if the timing works or something else. Choose if you would like to see the preview or final viewport. Then in the top menu click on Render, open GL Render Animation and wait till Blender has finished this task. Great! These were our 10 tips how to improve your workflow with our Flip Fluids add-on. We hope you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful and we would like that you subscribe our channel to see more upcoming learning videos. So, see you there. Goodbye!